Hey, what's up, everybody? This is your boy, Kenny. And this is That Employed Diaries, The Scarlet Tears Entries. And this is episode three. And the name of this episode is Brash and Sassy. And man, this was a really good episode. And I'm seeing there are going to be some developments that are going to be explosive down the line. And I can say, um, you know... Uh, you know, the cast and crew, you guys did a phenomenal job with this episode because I am on the edge of my seat waiting to see what's about to happen next. But, um, but, um, also, um, I, you know, I apologize that this, that this review is late. Um, for those of you who follow me on Facebook, um, my grandmother was rushed to the hospital a few days ago. Um, and right now she, she's stable, but, um, I just ask that, um, you know, and I, I want to also thank everyone who sent me love and support on Facebook, and I just ask that you, you know, pray for, pray for my family during this, you know, you know, during this time. And um, I also greatly appreciate, you know, everybody that's reached out to me. All right, so um, let me begin with this episode because, as I said before, there are developments that are being set up, and there are going to be some major explosions down the line. Like I'm really seeing a whole bunch of bombs that are gonna that are gonna start imploding. All right, and what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna try to group all of this together, you know, so I don't make this a long review. But if it gets long, bear with me. <laughs> it's just that so much happened, and I don't want to miss anything. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is Winston and Chadwick. And let me tell, let me let me go on to give a shout out to both to both um, David K. Price and Dante Hensley. You men are so phenomenally talented, and you are really playing these roles. I mean, and I have to say, I'm starting to see Chadwick in a different way now, and I'm starting to understand him a lot better. And it's 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 really got me on the edge of my seat because I'm like wondering what's going to happen between the two of them because we see that there's a lot going on with with that whole situation. So the episode opens up, we get Winston and Chadwick. Um, they're chilling in one of the you know rental one of the um properties that um Winston and Fallon own through Wincourt. And once um, Chadwick got wind of this, Chadwick was like, why the hell would you bring me here? Like, really? You know, why would you have me, you know, why would you bring me to, to a place, you know, that you and Fallon share with your business? What if she shows up? And Winston's like, she better not show up if she know what's good for her. So he already knowing. So, so Chadwick's already picking up things ain't cool between Winston and Fallon. So of course he asks him what happened to your friendship, and he and Winston is just blunt. He said that look, she wouldn't know a friend if they were to slap her in her face, because she took the one thing I treasured the most, and then was worse, she conspired with the enemy who tried to kill me. You know, you're like, what kind of evil is that? So, of course, you know, you know, Chadwick is is definitely game because, you know, he hates Fallon. And the next thing you know, Winston and Chadwick start making out and they end up having sex. And I think this is the same place where he was with Ashton the last time. The same, the same property. So, after, you know, they have sex, we see that Chadwick is bothered. So, of course, Winston's like, what's going on? And Chadwick's like, this doesn't feel right. You know, this whole thing, you know, this whole gay thing, it just doesn't feel right. And Winston was like, this is coming from the guy who tried to kiss me and kiss me, you know, you know, you know, in the boardroom, you know, like, really? <laughs> like, you know, this doesn't feel right, but yet you were literally trying to jump my bones in the boardroom the other day. And, but he's saying that, look. And then Chadwick explains that, look, this is about, you know, mainly like, you know, this doesn't feel right. You know, I'm thinking about my culture, my family, and that being who I am is, an, is, is, is considered an abomination. And, of course, Winston reminded him, like, dude, don't you have a cousin, Jabril? Jabril is gay, so you're not alone. And he's saying that, no, it's not the same thing. Jabril is an American. I'm from the islands. 
it's not the same thing. And I have to agree with Chadwick. Because in the islands, you know, in the Caribbean, which is why get, which is why Baron is so closeted. They both come, they both have that same mindset. They come from the islands, and in the islands, you know, being gay is literally considered like, you know, it's considered like the wrath of God, and gay people are treated very harshly, even to the point where they're burned alive in front of the in front of in front of everyone in the public. I mean, and I've seen some of these cases, and it's it's catastrophic and evil, right? So, I definitely get why Chadwick is the way he is, why he's so homophobic, and why he has an issue, why, you know, over, you know, once we kind of, you know, pretty much what we've seen from Chadwick, why he's so homophobic against effeminate men, because in, you know... And, you know, the island culture is considered an abomination. And the punishment is death. And, pu and as well as humiliation. You know, so with this conversation, he starts asking, you know, he starts, you know, Chadwick starts asking Winston about his relationships with men. You know, you know, how did you know you were into men? Well, he says that, look, we're going to keep this confidential, but my first time was with a woman, and, you know, I really didn't have feelings for a man, even though I had, I've had sex with men, I really didn't start having feelings for a man until this one person, and for some odd reason, he changed me, and it was just something about him that no matter what I do, I can't shake, and we all know he's talking about asking. Um, you know, but, um, but if anything, you know, you know, he, you know, Chadwick's like, you know, he's definitely asking these questions because, you know, I, you know, if anything, he wants to know more about Winston because it's obvious Chadwick is in love with him, even though he kind of got a little, a little side thing going on with Ian. But little does he know, that little side thing was also Baron's side thing, too. So, you know, it's a small world after all. But, um, you know, when he starts asking more questions about, because he asks him what's his name, and he tells him that his name is Ashton. So, obviously, so, of course, Chadwick wants to know more about Ashton, and Winston gets very defensive and is like, I don't want to talk about it. Leave it alone. Let it go. And he's like, well, interesting. So now I know what makes you tick. And then Winston was like, you will never know what makes me tick. And he's like, well, obviously, you know, this is like a weakness for you because this is the only thing that's making you emotional. And he was like, um, I don't have weaknesses. So then Chadwick starts asking the question, how many people have you killed for my family? You know, and he and and um, Winston was like, "I'm not asking him that," but he wouldn't leave it alone. And I think the reason is is because Chadwick wants to feel wants to feel some relief because we know he's been having nightmares after he killed Jordan, aka Liberace, in that Doomsday episode on um, I think it was episode ten. So. We know that he's been having nightmares, you know, you know, over, you know, killing him. And literally, you, you, you pretty much, I mean, in that episode, he mainly killed him because he read him his rights and pretty much told him that he wanted shit. But then also because he was, a, he was, you know, considered an effeminate homosexual. So that was also one of the reasons why Chadwick killed him. So... So we know that he has a lot of deep-seated homophobia, but it's also self-hate at the same time. So he keeps asking this question, you know, how many people did you kill? You know, and, 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 and pretty much <laughs> how Winston answered it was class A shade. He was like, um, you'll know the answer to that if I kill you. So try to stay alive. I was like, oh, damn, Winston. Winston! <laughs> like, <laughs> shut this shit completely down. 
and we see that Chadwick feels some kind of way, and if you know Chadwick, when Chadwick feels some kind of way, he will pull a rabbit out of his ass and do something crazy. So, afterwards, he pretty much lets, um, they get dressed, and Winston lets Chadwick know, um, that deal that we just negotiated, make sure that deal, that deal goes through with Davenport Industries. And he's like, I'll see what I can do. He's like, no, don't, don't try. Make it happen. Because we know that Winston is making power moves. But then again, Winston is playing a dangerous game because you know Chadwick's in love with you, but here it is. You guys are having this little, little liaison with each other, but it's, it's obvious to Chadwick that you're in love with somebody else when Chadwick is in love with Winston. So that is a bomb that's going to go off, and knowing how Chadwick feels at this moment, will he actually make that deal go through or will he do something to, you know, to get his way? Because we definitely know, at the end of the day, Chadwick is a bad import, and he got that trait. So the next thing I want to talk about is Raven and Tessa. Now, I am so happy Raven is back. Raven has come a long way since we first got introduced to Raven's character in Season 2. And I must say, Vanessa Damaris, you are a phenomenal actress. I am so happy that she's back, you know, because Raven's gorgeous. And, you know, I'm just so happy that Raven's back. But Raven has a totally new face and has a totally new um, new way about her. And this was great seeing how much Raven has grown. Because the last time we saw Raven... Raven was involved with this guy, Chuck, who raped her, and, you know, and, uh, you know, once, you know, him, once, you know, her and Fallon confronted him, because they set him up, and he admitted that he raped her, um, he started getting violent, and, you know, Raven, in self-defense, killed him, and, um, Jabril, Baron, and Fallon helped her cover it up, helped her, helped her cover it up. And they moved her to D.C. to kind of get herself together. And we see that Baron has been taking really good care of her because now she's Baron's assistant. And she literally is sitting in Tessa's house. Um, and Tessa comes in, you know, you know, um, with this beautiful dog. Like, the dog was so pretty. That was a pretty dog. And notices that, um, that, that Raven's there and immediately... We definitely know there was, there's bad blood between them because we remember when we first met Raven, Tessa went, you know, and found Raven, but she brought her back into Fallon's life to destroy her. So she literally came in ready to take down Fallon, ready to, you know, take down anything that was in her path. So there's bad blood between them, and then all of a sudden when things didn't go her way, Tessa cut her off. Because Tessa was, you know, had her up in a nice place and, you know, was giving her money. But then once Tessa didn't get what she wanted, she cut her ass off. And that was the end of it. So we literally, so as soon as they see each other, she's like, what the hell are you doing in my house? You know, and, you know, she's, she's pretty much saying like, you know, yeah, I knew something was up because, you know, you know, like at the end of the day, I know a hooker when I see one. And then pretty much Raven was throwing it back, yes. And yeah, yeah, you and your Botox face. So I was like, oh my God. And then she lets her, she, um, Raven lets her know, I'm here for Baron. He wants me to take some pictures because he's thinking about liquidating some properties. So he's literally talking about selling the house right from under Tessa. So Baron's on some other shit. And I'm thinking, based off of some of the moves, Baron's definitely got a plan up his sleeve, and I think in time we're going to find out what that is. But I'm not going to speak about it too much here, but yeah. Just the fact that he's, you know, thinking about liquidating properties, and then I'm also going to bring him up again later, and that's what's going to make me think Baron got a... I think, Brand, I think Baron may be planning, you know, something big. But, um, you know, so... So pretty much she's like, look, I'm just here on good on on good intentions. I'm just doing my job, you know, 
I really don't want now. I really don't want to go back and forth with you, Tessa. But Tessa was like, "Oh, really? You really think you're somebody? Because last, because as far as I know, you're still the little bitch I found in the strip club." And she's like, "Yeah, and you still the same bitch from the trailer park." I'm like, "Y'all better stop." Um. So, pretty much, you know, they kind of go back and forth, and eventually, Raven makes the confession that she was raped. And we see that that completely changed Tessa because at the end of the day, this is still your granddaughter. So all of a sudden, Grandma came in and she was like, oh my God, because Tessa knows what it's like because Tessa came from a rough background where she was raped and abused by men. So they immediately start having this conversation and she opens up about what happened and... You know, she they, and um, she talks about what happened between between Chuck and how he, you know, raped her, and how she confronted him about him making a pass at Derek, which he did because he was a he was a DL slut and was on some bullshit. But then when she confronted him about it, he got aggressive, he got violent, and it was a brutal rape. And you know, after ever after, after that happened, she let Fallon know about it, and they decided to set him up and. You know, I pretty much told you what happened after that. So, you know, she pretty much tells Tessa all of this. And we see that Tessa really softens up. And this actually gets the two of them to bond. And it was beautiful to see. You know, it was beautiful to see Tessa embrace her granddaughter. And Raven open up to her grandmother. So it was great that we saw this bond come together. Um... And we um and pretty much she she really um she um she also says that you know um she's gonna be going back to Easton soon and you know Tessa lets her know like yeah watch out for Chadwick because you know Chadwick is cunning so you know stay away from him um and she also talks about Jarrell you know and she knows about Jarrell being shot and we can definitely see she's still in love with Jarrell so. Um, and she, and she says she's going to hang on to their love, you know, and, you know, they have a discussion about being dad and poor women that, you know, that, um, that one was strong, we're always right, and we always get what we want. Know that, that, know that, know that, um, that's your strength as a dad and poor woman. So, you know, and then she also says that, you know, also be leery of your grandfather, you know, because he has a he has a way of of dealing with business. He has a way of dealing business and that um you know but so she pretty much tells her, you know, be wary. So that was actually a, a pretty good scene and it was good to see, you know it was good to see um, you know, see Fallon and Tessa come together. Oh, yeah, talk about that. So we see that, you know, Raven has, um, she has returned to Easton. Um, she's working, you know, because she's their assistant. And then we meet a new character. His name is um, Marcus Hampton. He's the younger brother of Lawrence. And we know that Lawrence and Fallon have a thing going on because we saw him. We, we actually first met him. We, we first met Lawrence in the um, special... Um, with the um the extra video, I think it was called um, Ignite. Um, that's the first time we met Lawrence. Well, we're now being introduced to his younger brother Marcus, who's played by Jordan Adams. And shout out to Jordan Adams; he's a great actor because he is delivering this character. Because Marcus, let me go on to say, Marcus is fine. Woo! Yes, I'm just like, he is fine, but yet, he knows he's fine, so he's pompous, he's arrogant, he's nasty, he's chauvinistic, and he is a he is just a complete, utter, stuck-up asshole. So, we see that Raven is getting, is doing some work, he walks in, and was like, where's Barrett? 
you know, this is unlike him to not show up for a meeting. Where the hell is he? And Raven's like, well, right now he's in Japan on some business, which, again, what I was thinking, I think Baron is planning. I mean, this is just my hypothesis. I can be completely wrong. But Baron is, I think, is probably um, planning a hostile takeover to take back, you know, the dominant shares of Davenport Industries. So, so if anything, you know, we see, we see that, um, so, so pretty much at first, he's very condescending the way they, like, first he thought that she was, so what are you, an intern? And she's like, no, I'm the granddaughter of, of, of Baron, and he's not here right now, so, you know, what can I do for you? So, and we see that Marcus is literally walking around like it's his company. You know, he puts his foot up on, he puts his feet up on the um, desk, on the table, and he's just talking out his ass, you know, you know, pretty much saying, pretty much, you know, just acting like, like an entitled kid because he knows that, you know, his family owns now majority of the shares in Davenport Industries, and due to the fact that Davenport Industries is a public, publicly traded company, you know, the shareholders pretty much hold, hold the reins of power. So, you know, he starts talking, you know, all this stuff, and then he knows about Raven's past and kind of throws it up in her face, you know, and she's like, look, I'm just trying to work and do my job like everybody else. She's like, oh, yes, we know that money is, is something that you're drawn to, especially in your past experience. But then he starts saying, like, I wonder if you're like your mother. You know, are you, you know, are you um, also powerful in the boardroom and the bedroom? So I'm like, oh, you motherfucker. Because at the end of the day, you know, what I'm thinking of, 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 um, of Marcus Marcus wants to be the CEO of Davenport Industries, but he knows, but then again, you know, we all know that the, that the Hamptons and Fallon got a little secret alliance going on because Lawrence wants to take over the company, and then he wants to put Fallon back in the place of CEO. But then again, I'm thinking Fallon about to get some opposition because I think little brother Marcus, he wants, you know, he wants a he wants a um, a seat of power and entitlement, and he literally is just coming coming in like he owned the bitch. So then we see that they they go back and forth, and Raven lets it be known. She's like, "Look, I am not the bitch you want to fuck with. So if you come at me wrong, I will I will take you down." And he was just saying like, "Oh." It's just so funny, you know, the nepotism, you know, that you, it's just so funny how nepotism and being a long lost family member could get you, you know, just still being smug. And he's like, you know, nice to meet you. And she's like, sorry, I can't say the same. And she leaves. And I noticed that Marcus gives a look. And that look let me know he's into Raven. So I'm, we're going to see what's going to happen with that. You know, so we de I definitely clocked that day. Yeah, he's definitely got his eyes out for her. Then um, we actually also have a scene between um, between Christian and Fallon. He lets her know that he talked to Allure, um, and he said that, and she's like, and she, so, so of course Fallon's had to be like, wow, you got her together. He was like, yeah, but I lied and told her that me and you were going to be done. You know, so we just got to be extra careful. And she's like, and then like Fallon, being who she is, is like, oh, no, that bitch is using that shit as leverage. Um, you know, but I ain't worried about it because I have a way of, minim of, of um, minimizing the risk. So, of course, Christian's like, what do you mean by that? He was saying that, look, if she even thinks she's going to utter a word about what's going on between me and you, I will make her life and live in hell. And Christian immediately shut her down, like, hold up, that's my best friend, you're not going to come at her like that, and you're definitely not going to come at her with all of these bad and poor, you know, tactics and bullshit, like, you're not going to do this, you need to leave that damn bad and poor shit at the door, and I'm like, oh, Christian, okay, 
more is starting to get start more is starting to come out about this because I really do think that that um Christian is in love with Alora. I really do. Just the same way that Fallon was in love with Winston, which is why she hates Ashton so much because he not only he not only had an affair with her husband, but it also he had an affair with her first crush or her first secret love. And he and that Winston is in love with him. So now I'm starting to understand even more now why she hates Ashton so bad. So it's kind of like this, they both kind of in similar situations. And he feels bad because he, is, he feels that he has crossed a line that he normally wouldn't cross. He's usually an honest person, but now he's being dishonest. But being dishonest to who? Allura? Fallon? Well, well, actually, I think he's being dishonest in more ways than one. He's not only being dishonest to Allura, because he's still seeing Fallon. I think he's being dishonest to Fallon because he's actually, he actually is in love with Allura. But, but then again, Fallon thinks that Allura is in love with him. But I think it's the other way around. And he's being dishonest with himself. So he's kind of caught in this situation and he's kind of uneasy about it. So we definitely saw that go on. And of course she actually talks about that she's going to be meeting up with Raven because Raven calls her while they're, while they're talking. Um, and she pretty much said that she's going to be, you know, meeting up with her and, you know, they, she talked about her challenges of being a mother, you know, and he pretty much, you know, gives his support. But we definitely look in um, Christian's face that, yeah, things are not, things are shaky. So we definitely got to keep watching with that. Then we see that after that scene, we see that Marcus decides to go mess with Allura. You know, and Allura is definitely strategic and she's all about business, which is why we love her. You know, because she's a boss chick just like, just like Fallon. You know, and that's why we love Fallon, because Fallon's a boss and she takes no prisoners. And pretty much she just comes up in there being pompous and arrogant, you know, pretty much, you know, the boy who's had a silver spoon, and now, you know, because pretty much he, he came in there because, you know, she, he wants her to shadow him about how, the, how, of how to run the company, and he wants to know about, you know, about the ins and outs of the company, and if anything, you know, she lets him know that, first of all, you went past security clearance. You were very disrespectful. That is not cool. At the end of the day, yeah, you made your family own shares, but that does not give you the license to come in here and disrespect these employees and disrespect people who are working for us. So he's pretty much saying, I want to shadow you and everything. And she says, look, I'll send you, I'll set you up with my program analyst, and we'll go from there. He's like, well, my mission is to shadow you. So, you know, I want to follow you. And, you know, one thing I also notice is that maybe we need to work on the dress code because that skirt is a little too high. And I'm like, you chauvinistic piece of shit. It's like he's literally just going out of his way to be a dickhead. And it's like that's what it is. It's like he's like a rich boy who wants power and because he comes from money, he thinks he can just throw his money and his weight around. Um, but he says that, yeah, yeah, the skirt's too high, but it's tempting, though. And she lets him know that, look, you're not going to disrespect me. You're not going to disrespect, you know, get my family. Because at the end of the day, I am not the one you want to cross. And I'm not the one you want you want to play with because... Uh, trust and believe, yeah, I work here, but I'm a boss woman. I was a boss before I came here, and you not you, you like you got me fucked up. So then he's like, um, so is this true about all the Davenport women? And she's like, what? That you're all bitches. I'm like, see, here go that chauvinism again. But then she politely fixed up his suit. She's like, see, um. 
see being a bitch and being bitches, um, that's a Hampton trait. Get into it. And walk the fuck out of there. I was like, oh, Lord, you better do it. Because he, you know, it, it's like he is just coming in all nasty and rude and, you know, condescending. And he's willing to, he's willing to you know, pull up any skirt that comes his way. And the thing about it, he, he's fine, but he knows he's fine. And you know those are the ones you definitely got a problem with. Because when they know they're fine, oh, trust. They be pulling stunts out their asses that even Sigmund and Roy don't even see coming. So we definitely saw that go down. But, but you know, she kind of let it be known where she stood. And then we also see that, you know, um, that Fallon and Raven have a moment, you know, and while they're talking, you know, they, we see that, you know, they've developed, they're, they've developed, their relationship has developed since the last time. You know, they, they have good rapport with each other. You know, she calls Darren Pop Pop. So she's seeing that she's gotten very close with Darren. And we start to see that Fallon feels some kind of way because, you know, she's always wanted that relationship with her father. But she's happy that Raven is, you know, working things out with, with Baron and that, you know, this may be, you can see it as Baron's second chance because he screwed up with Fallon. He's trying to make things right with his granddaughter. So we definitely see that. And then she also mentioned that Marcus came into the building. She was like, oh, he's bad news. I need you to stay away from him. And... Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, so yeah, they definitely had a moment, but, be, but then I'll just go back and talk about that. Um, so, I was going to, what I mean by, you know, because we also had a scene with Raven and Allure. But, you know, she does meet with her mother, and they actually have a good, they actually have a good rapport with each other. And she really sees how much Raven has improved since then. And before that happened, she had met her with Allure. And her and Allure went back and forth, and at first Allure was not giving Raven the time of day because she's going by history about how Raven came in there and was, you know, she was making all of these. She, she was pretty much trying to take down, you know, she's literally trying to take down, um, uh, you know, Fallon and how she was making all of these, you know, how she was coming for Jabril and everybody. And she was just, she literally came in there, you know, causing a bunch of mess. So Allura is like, she wasn't here for it. But, you know, after a while, you know, once Raven pretty much owns up, like, look, I know what I did was in the past, but I don't need you to be up in here judging me. I'm, I'm a new person, and I'm trying to do things right, and I thought you would be somebody that would understand that, about getting a second chance and making things right. And Allura finally softens up, and we see that the two of them actually bond. And it was actually surprising because at first, Allura and Raven looked like they was about to scrap. But then that all faded. And we kind of saw the same situation between Raven and Tessa. So they actually talk and they talk and they both talk about Marcus like, like, oh, yeah, you know, you know, you know, oh, yeah, Mr. Wonderful, huh? Yeah, he ain't nothing but a suited grease ball. She's like, I dealt with men like that. You know, he don't even worry about him. You know, and then they also, and like, of course, Allura talks about, you know, I'm glad that you're kind of working things out with your mom, and, you know, I know me and your mom ain't on good terms, but I'm happy that the two of you are working things out with each other. So, you know, it take, and it takes a real woman to be that way. You know, yeah, I may got issues with your mother, but I'm not going to take that out on you, and I'm not going to disrespect your mother in front of you. So, that's real. So then, we get the damn... You you get you get the damn kick of the episode because at the end, Fallon goes you know to Davenport Industries and fucking Marcus runs into her, and you know he's like oh my god and she's like what the hell are you doing here Marcus and he's like look you know I've been hearing all this stuff going about you know Davenport Industries I had to come down here and see for myself I wanted to see what the hype is all about and yet. I ran it, and, and yet, you know, I've been disrespected both by your mini-me and your cousin. <laughs> and she's like, why are you here? She's like, you know what, Lord, she to keep your ass on the leash. Why are you here? What are you doing? He's like, look, you know, we both on the same team. I'm just trying to, you know, be helpful and be useful. And she's like, boy, you are useful. Um, 
And she pretty much <laughs> uh, she was like, boy, you are useful as being in traffic. You ain't nothing but a problem. You know what? This is what you need to do. You need to leave. Um, you need to leave. Do something with yourself and keep your damn mouth shut. And she walks off. And we can see in damn Marcus' face, he do not like Fallon at all. And, of course, we know that when he was coming at Raven and was kind of like putting out that, you know, that Fallon's a hoe, that she gets down in the ballroom and the bedroom. I'm like, yeah, because you probably feel some kind of way that she done put Lawrence on diamond status. And because, you know, that diamond, that diamond is, sh is, uh, is shining bright. You know, huh, Lawrence want to make sure that he get found as CEO, whereas he wants to be CEO. So we just got to keep watching. As I said, there are things that are being set up that are going to be big explosions later on. So that's what I have, y'all. If I missed anything, put it down in the comments. But first, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to BRTBTV.com. I will have that link in the description box. Subscribe right now. They got a lot of great shows coming up. Um, you know, they just recently released The Uglies, which is a really great show. Um, you know, and there's a lot of great content that's going to be coming out in BRTB TV. So, so sign up today and get your descript and get your subscription to um, BRTB TV Productions. Also, check out the Triangle Fan Club on Facebook. You get everything BRTB TV. You get you know posts from you know fans. And also, you know, posts from the cast and crew, as well as updates from the creator, Caesar Williams himself. So, BRTBTV.com, Triangle Fan Club on Facebook. Also, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my channel. Click that bell so you can get notifications every time I drop a video. Also, follow me on all of my social platforms. I have them all listed in the description box. Also, like this video, comment on this video, and share this video. And I will be back with the next episode of Davenport Diaries, man. I can't wait to see what's going to happen in episode four. Because this little part of the Scarlet Tears entries has literally got me biting my nails like, oh, shit. So, we definitely, we're definitely going to stay tuned. So, until then, everybody, take care.